So I'm going to dispense almost entirely with introductions. I, I, uh, I think all of you know who all these people are. Chuck Close on my left, Mark Greenwald in the center, and Lisa Scavage next to me. All among the most interesting painters living today and also among the most interesting talkers about painting living today. So um, despite the gratuitously, um, grot sorry, grotesquely open-ended subject of tonight's talk. If anyone can shed light on an unilluminable topic, I think um, these people can. Uh, so what, what is, maybe I should begin by um, with a little disclaimer and um, debunking. Tonight's topic isn't going to be um, simply, uh, um, if one can say that, art and sex. It's going to be also, um, what art and sex, I think, stands for, in part anyway, in the mind of the person who came up with the title, a person whose initials I won't reveal, but they're Mark Greenwald. <laughs> um, I think art and, I, I suspect that art and sex are the... Um, it's sex and painting. Sex and painting. Sex and painting, not... <laughs> are some... Tino, fuck Tino Segal. Yeah, let's not let <laughs> Tino Segal go elsewhere. The moderator is really required tonight. It's not just a bogus job. Um, I. <laughs> well, he gets very Jewish. We're going to talk. Bit. We're going to talk partly about the paintings around us, the buildings, Roman, of how Mark came to become the painter he is. In in a lot of for a lot of painters, normally that would be a much. Uh, messier, harder to see in one gallery story. But because Mark has always been a exceptionally uh, slow and um, monomaniacal painter, his more or less his whole early career is visible here tonight for those of you who've walked around the gallery. So we get a rare opportunity to see how somebody moves from graduate school to maturity in um, seven large paintings and, and a bunch of super interesting drawings. So we'll talk about that, and we'll also talk about the ostensible topic in, in a variety of ways. And I thought we would, might begin, in the catalog for the show, um, Mark and I talked about the, this era. And Mark at one point says, uh, you want me to own up to the sociology and sexual excess of the 70s, or indeed to admit that as a repressed Midwesterner, I was so completely taken up by the sheer sexual impact of that tsunami moment that my work was some orgiastic celebration of it, and I've been forever after post-coitally living in its wake. <laughs> Both of these things are, of course, true, but to me it's too simple and tidy a reading. So this is a typical Mark move. He's owning up and disowning simultaneously to um, what's going on in these paintings, but I wanted to get back to this uh, quasi-admission and talk a little bit about the period when these paintings, uh, when you started making these paintings, Mark, and about to what extent you felt that um, sex was a kind of a frontier subject, sex was something that had a special utility to you as a, as a maker of pictures? Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's such a long time ago, and, uh, you know, it's 40 years ago, and, um, you know, it's hard to, articulate what I feel about sex at this moment, let alone how I felt about sex at that moment. Probably I felt in, in some ways always that I wasn't getting enough and I, I wasn't doing it well and you know, I was disappointed. No, no, the, we're talking about sex. No, no. Uh, so the idea that, you, you know, and, and the sociology of it never really interested me. I mean, I was, you know, just consciously anyway. I mean, it seems to me that, um, I was making paintings uh, about stuff that interested me to paint, and they were paintings. And, you know, that I was making things that revealed an era or would be interesting. I mean, all I remember, for example, in Bright Promise, is how crazy it felt to spend a year on a bedspread. So they're mostly, what's interesting about painting in retrospect is the pain part is invisible. <laughs> And uh, they look perhaps not exactly effortless, uh, but, but they were things that I was very preoccupied with 
but the but the connection with my personal life. I mean, just not. Alexi pushed me to tr say things that you know. <laughs> that I was not uh, particularly uh, happy to say, uh, yeah, not hap unhappy to say, but m sort of make you, you points. Already you have a sense of how unlikely this is. Uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> Listen, make if, you, if you'd right. spent a year on a bedspread in another way, you would have had a lot more sex. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, Chuck was told I have a heart condition, and he has to be, he can't. No, I mean, the point was I was preoccupied with making the painting, and God knows what a chenille bread spread has to do with getting laid, and the culture, and, you and know. You don't even know and what's. And Gates Lee's, you know, writing a book called Thy Neighbor's Wife, you know, I mean, and, you know, and, and running a massage parlor, uh, you know, and telling his wife, Nan, that it was, everything was great. He was just doing research. You know, it was an interesting time, but just like now, um, I, I, I seem very, it, it didn't seem like I was reflecting the culture. If I, in some ways, these paintings have a kind of feeling about the period, uh, I'm, I'm pleased, and, uh, but anyway. <laughs>